From the Cleary Alumni Center on the campus of the University of Wisconsin La Crosse, it's the Mike Schmidt Football Show. Brought to you by Honda Motorworks, your electric and hybrid headquarters at Fourth and Cass. By Schilling Supply, serving businesses with critical supplies since 1897. By Schumacher Kish Cremation and Funeral Services in La Crosse, La Crescent, and on Alaska. By 360 Real Estate Solutions, they've got the keys to your new home. And by Market & Johnson, Western Wisconsin's construction leader, adding value to everything they do. Now, here's the host of today's program, Terry Erickson. Well, welcome to UW Lacrosse. We are in the Cleary and Friends Alumni Center for the Mike Schmidt Football Show here on KQEG. The show is live on the stream and also played back each Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. We want to begin, like we do each week, acknowledging our sponsors, and they include Shilling Paper, Shilling Supply Company, Honda Motor Works, Schumacher Kish Funeral Homes, 360 Real Estate, and Market and & Johnson. We, we also want to acknowledge a great turnout here, our guests, it's growing every week. We thank you in support of Coach Mike Schmidt and UWL Eagle football. Well, and now the star of the show, Mike Schmidt. We're back for more. Well, I, I, I've, been to, I've been involved in a lot of exciting games as a parent, as an official, as a broadcaster, as a player, as a coach. I'm not sure I've been, that ranks right at the top, I'm telling you. Yeah, that was uh, pretty exciting how it finished. Uh, you know, and I don't know that we, you know, for me, I, I kept pretty calm, uh, actually, uh, through, through most of it. And, and so you kind of are just trying to get your guys uh, to, to realize what they have to do at this point and not get too nerved up, I think, was kind of the key as the, as the game went on. Um, you know, we just have a lot of young guys who are playing in that kind of a situation for their first time. And, you know, I think our message throughout the whole thing was just try to enjoy that moment. Uh, I know I certainly was and, and, and had quite a bit of fun with it, too. Enjoy the moment is right. A defining signature win for UWL Eagle football. Yeah. And, I, and I, I don't know if everybody realizes how big a win it was. And I could see at the end of the game from the press box, you uh, increased your vertical jump quite a bit, and, and you started hugging everybody in sight, including, I think you hugged somebody from the other team, but that's okay. Yeah, that's you, all right. You were very excited. I just was hugging anybody that was going to come in front of me right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, my vertical went from 6 inches to 12, so I was really off the ground quite a bit. But, uh, you know, it was just really cool. I think at the end of the game, um, we, we were kind of huddled up, and we made a couple jokes about maybe potentially running a fake field goal right at the end. You know, we kicked the last second field goal, and, and we make, make a couple jokes in the huddle. And, and I just told those guys, hey, go out. We, we start every practice with PATs and field goals. Enjoy this moment moment and and, uh, and and the guys just they all looked around the huddle and they all said hey coach we love you we love each other they, they told Ryan Byrne he must have been told 50 times we love you Ryan and <laughs> and that and the first eight guys that grabbed me were all just coach I love you this was so great and so uh, really just a cool moment for our guys and for our program boy I guess so just if those those that were not there that are watching this or here uh, what was amazing I didn't count but I was because uh, I'm not that good in math but about 180 players I quit at about 170 there's still more 180 players unbelievable dressed on the sideline for the Titans and a lot of people thought well is this that good a team oh my gosh even I wasn't sure they were much better than anybody ever thought. Yeah, they're a really good football team. You know, I, I thought that we really felt that going into it, how good they were going to be. Um, but they, that's a wonderful football team. And, and that's what I think I said a couple times, that we just we, we really beat a good football team. That, that offense was spectacular, I thought. I thought their defense was full of a lot of good players. I thought we had a great game plan up on offense and were able to, to get into some of the positive matchups for us. And, and just that was a really good team. That, that's a really good team. And I think they'll show that through uh, – uh, their CCIW schedule here coming up, but yeah, we, we really got away and, and really stole one uh, from them at their place. That's a good team that we beat. Over, some overall thoughts. Before we break down the game, um, what I thought was interesting, 155 yards rushing, 305 passing for UWL. Comfortable with that? Yeah, that's a good split. We had a good job. Um, I thought our offense had a good balance with what we did, our running backs, and you'll, you'll hear from Austin Mankoski coming up, but uh, boy, those guys ran really hard. They did great in protection. Um, 
So that was really fun to see though, the, the, just the way, the conviction that we ran the football with. Our offensive line, I mean, can we say enough good things about what they did again with a young group uh, picking things up? They only allowed one sack. Ben is so good on the move uh, and throwing the football down the field. And then obviously the connection that Ben had with the wide receivers and Cole Speaker having another huge game. Uh, Awesome, awesome game plan and great execution by our guys. Well, and, and, and before we get into this really quick, we could spend a half hour just on this segment, but um, you're right, your offensive line, there was questions early. I know Cole in the paper made a couple comments about it, and he was right because it was untested, but oh my gosh, they just dominate. A couple quick things, though. One, one, one thing I noticed, uh, early in the game, well, we, we'll talk about that punt. But uh, now you're sort of, instead of going just to Sean Parker and his conventional style punting, you're, you're using, contingent on down and distance and field position, you're using Ryan Byrne uh, as a rugby style, perhaps, uh, the opportunity to fake. Yeah, it was nice to have him in, in some of the looks that we had for it, uh, but it was really great. It's it's nice to to be able to use a rugby style punter, especially they had two punt returners back, so we wanted to make sure that we weren't just getting the football up in the air and and uh, uh, and giving it to them. We wanted to, to kind of have to have them guess where we were going to be at with it, and, and Ryan did a great job with it, and then obviously it sparked uh, and, and set us up for the fake punt. It did. It, as we just quickly look at the game, early in the first uh, I was absolutely impressed. I don't know if you were shocked or impressed or maybe none of those two things, but right away the Titans come down uh, and you said to me in a meeting, Brandon Bauer, he's the real deal. Yep. And my gosh, right away they just came down immediately and sent a message. Yeah, and we, we kind of talked about it, you know, uh, through on the sideline after that was just about the fact that when I told Coach Janice, I said, when you when you watch the film, you're going to see that we just missed plays, and, and we did, and a lot of it was the quarterback had the ability to extend it again. We get through free on a blitz, and we miss him. Uh, we're able to get in the backfield a couple other times on that drive. We miss him, uh, and, and they just did a great job executing. That kid did a great job uh, extending the play, and yeah, get, they jumped right out on us uh, with a 7 nothing lead. But you're up 24-10 at half. Second, second half, they did not quit. This, this is what it, uh, I, it was admirable, to say the least. Mm -hmm. uh, Bauer comes back right away and scores, and then a design pass, which to me was incredible, because if I remember this correctly, and I, I, I'm sure you've watched it, I don't think uh, Ben Shramsky was even touched on that 47-yard yeah. touchdown. Yeah, third and one, we run power pass on it out of pro. Ben just breaks the pocket and, and goes, and Austin delivers a huge block to free him around the 10-yard line and, and scores on it. Uh, that really put us in, in pretty good position, you know, to hold on and win it. Obviously, they came back and had such a great fourth quarter against us. But, you know, ultimately, just came uh, uh, any one of those kind of games, it comes down to, you know, we had the, the fake punt early in the game to get us going and get momentum in our favor, and we really capitalized to get out to that big lead. Uh, but then in the second half, it comes down to one stop and one score. That's right. all you got to get. The defense came up with that huge stop in the fourth quarter, and our offense obviously was able to convert the drive. They do. Before we go to break quickly, and then, of course, Jack Healy, who you and I talked about was a yeah. tough matchup for Colton Neiman and others came alive in the fourth quarter a guy by the name of Bryce Dooley who wasn't even Great on player. depth chart uh, came and then it sets up the dramatic ending which when we come back the guy that was involved in that dramatic ending to a tremendous game will be one of our guests. Yeah, really awesome. Really just great that, that we're able to cap that drive. You know, we get out, Cole Speaker has the, the, the play to set up. Now we can move the football uh, and, and do kind of what we want to do because we got out to midfield so fast. Uh, and then, you know, we, get the, we run the football right down inside the 10-yard line, inside the five-yard line. Uh, in really, really dramatic fashion. I know we'll talk about that here coming up, but it sets up that final play it and does, final kick. It does, and, and, and your, your OC, Luke Bankston, so on, in, in that last drive. Great job. Unbelievably good. Well, we're gonna, we have to step aside just for a moment. When we come back, we're going to have two significant players from Saturday's win right after this. Did I, kind of, did I go over a little bit too long?
360 Real Estate Solutions has the keys to your new home. Introducing the Hub on 6, rooftop lofted condos for sale. Beautifully designed with open floor plans up to three bedrooms. The Hub has what you need for city life, from studios to three bedrooms, to fit your lifestyle and your pocketbook. With the extra touches that matter, a rooftop sports court, bike storage, with a washing center, community rooms, storage units, laundry, a pet walk, and a workout room. Get your tour today at hubon6.360.b. The all-new Honda Fit gives you the flexibility of the magic seat with the fuel efficiency you celebrate at the pump. From Honda Motorworks. You love more miles per dollar. Honda Motorworks. The all-new Honda. Since 1897, Schilling Supply Company has been your single source provider of business solutions and supplies. Their 65,000 square foot facility stocks over 3,000 items ranging from packaging, janitorial, industrial, food processing, safety, and specialty products. Schilling Supply provides the essentials you need to meet your customers' and employees' expectations. Businesses like Gunderson, Quick Trip, Dynamic Recycling, and Badger Corrugating rely on Schilling Supply to deliver the right products at the right time. Schilling Supply Company. Visit on the web or call. Stunning from any angle, the HRV is a crossover of style and versatility. You love more miles per dollar. Honda Motor Works. Welcome back to the Mike Schmidt Football Show. Well, we're joined in this segment with two key players, significant guests from Saturday's big win, Austin Mankuski, Ryan Byrne. Welcome to the show, guys. Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Thoughts on how these guys were a big part of the success, I mean, coach. these guys are the, are the final drive, uh, you know, along with Cole Speaker, obviously, having the catch to set it up. But, uh, boy, Austin had another great game. He had a great start last week against Luther and then, and then carried that forward and had just a fantastic game uh, the other day, running the football, pass protection. Uh, like I said in the first segment, picks up a huge block that springs Ben really free and, and ultimately scores that, that fourth touchdown for us. Uh, uh, early in the third quarter there, middle of the third quarter uh, with it. But, uh, boy, end of the game, you can't say enough about what both of these guys did. Austin runs the ball and gets a set up uh, for the, the chip shot field goal that we had. And then Ryan, obviously, I, I, I said last week on the show, boy, couldn't have a better start for the guy in his first college game. Yeah, he topped that uh, in the second one. He throws for a fake punt that really jump starts uh, the entire team in the first half and then, uh, you know, has to kick the winning field goal four different times, uh, has to line up and kick the winning field goal four times over like a six-minute span uh, and just still ice water in his veins and drills it. I guess so. Starting with Austin, you know, you mentioned something I, I think is significant. I pointed it out during the broadcast. 
Austin gives himself up as a tremendous blocker Great. when he does not carry the ball. A little known part of the game uh, that to me is impressive. But Austin, um, from Lena, Illinois, did you recognize any of the players? Had you played against any of no. those guys at all? Because no. they, because I looked at the roster, and out of the 180 players, I think 170 from were from the state of Illinois. Yeah, no, I didn't recognize anyone from the you roster, did. but uh, that might be because I'm older than I suppose. <laughs> been on the team for so long. But you, so. you've carried the ball so far 22 times for like 100 yards. You caught five passes for 44. Looking back at your career, though, this is what a lot of people here and uh, watching this probably don't know. Uh, 2014, 36 carries, 139 yards. 2015 as a sophomore, uh, 403 all-purpose yards. 200, uh, 2016, 163 yards. But in 2000, the missing part is 2017. Mm -hmm. That was a traumatic situation for you. Share yeah. that with us. Yeah, so that getting ready for that season, beginning of July, uh, ended up fracturing my left foot, uh, which required surgery, and then um, worked my way back, tried to work. We were preparing for, to make my way back for Carroll Week of that, of that season. And so everything worked out, rehab went well and everything. And then um, that first game back, beginning of the second quarter, is like second drive that I was out there. Ended up doing the same exact thing to my right foot, yeah. having to have surgery. Boy, so. and a difficult year for you and for the coaches and your family and so on. Um, but now you've come back, and a lot of people don't know this too. You, my friend, are in grad school. I am. <laughs> <laughs> and you and, and and you are you're on on your way to becoming a so I'm in the biology master's program so I got my undergrad in biology graduated last December and so the only way I'd be at, since I short credited that semester planning on graduating at the end of that semester the only way I'd be eligible to play it this season was if I got into grad school so applied last and got in two days before New Year's and uh, started last January and so have this semester and then two more after this. And on your way to becoming a physician? Possibly. Possibly. Yeah, I don't, I don't know yet. <laughs> well, that's, that's awesome. But let's not forget about this guy next to me, Ryan Burr. Now everybody, because he's from West Salem, the home of the Panthers, yeah. everybody knows who he is and what his career was like in high school. Um, but it, here's what's interesting. You're three for three in field goals. You are nine for 10 in PATs. I don't know what happened on the one at Luther, but you're nine for 10, that's pretty good. Here's the most interesting thing about you, in, in my view. I, I want your, your thought on this. Fourth down, uh, you're on your own, like, 18-yard lines. You got uh, 18, your own now, not the other team. Your own 18-yard line, and you have 19 yards to go for a first down, and you're behind because they had just scored. And I said to my, my broadcasting partner, I said, well, there's no way they're going to fake it on this. It's, so the fake is called from a peculiar yard line, and what was your thought when he told you to fake it? Yeah, initially I kind of had the same thought. I was like, "Oh man, <laughs> we're we're pretty we're pretty backed up here, and we're gonna run this fake." But then after that initial thought, I was just like, "All right, let's go convert this first down." So then I saw what they were running from the defense standpoint, and I was like, "All right, speakers right open." So I did you have the option to kick it though? Yeah, rugby style on yeah. that particular play. I do because yeah. you're because okay, but here's what's interesting too. We were sitting right there broadcasting on that yard line, and do you know that you completed the pass to him? about maybe a one-tenth of an inch to the successful side. It was that close. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah, after watching the film, I was like, wow, that was a lot closer than <laughs> I thought it was. <laughs> and you threw the cold speaker, but yeah. uh, real quickly, the mental, you're, you're approaching practice. Now, you're, you're not involved in a lot of things, so you're on the sideline. You're approaching practice in, in your mental aspect of the game, particularly when the field goes on. A lot of people crumble mentally. So two questions, what do you do in practice? And three, how do you prepare mentally when the game is on the line? Yeah, uh, so in practice, it's just a matter of repetition, getting the technique down and trusting that technique. And then back in, and then you just translate that into the game. So then when the game time rolls around, you know that you're prepared for this moment, and it's just a, just a simple kick. Simple kick. Simple kick, he says. It's like, I'm glad else? he feels that way. One, one last question about that. I checked the rule book on this NC2A because I know there were a couple of penalties right at the end. 
whether they were uh, predetermined offside, right. you, you, you got a little upset, I think. No, I mean, it, it is what it is. I think, actually, that's a pretty good strategy. We've talked about it as a staff. We should try to <laughs> – I mean, that's, that's a great deal. What if they don't call that you're offsides and, and you end up blocking the kick? I mean, exactly. you're putting it on the, on the onus of the, of, the, uh, of the official, and if you get it, then you get it. So I thought that was a great move by them. Do you know that you could, you could continue to be offside for, like, 20 times yeah. if you want to be? Yeah. And the official only would has the ability to come in and if he thinks it's uh, unsportsmanlike, he can call that. But uh, uh, but that was an interesting strategy. By the way, you can decline those too. We did decline the first one, and, and then we had to accept the second one because they jumped off sides, and then we missed the field goal, which is, was the result of the uh, – then that resulted in the untimed down uh, after we had to accept it. So we declined the first one, had to accept the second one. Okay. Uh, Austin, personal goals for you for the season? Uh, stay healthy, one, <laughs> um, and then just be the best teammate that I can and have as much fun as I possibly can. Something tells me that you are a good teammate. Just by yes. your body language, I can see that. And Ryan, how about you? Here you are. You had a lot of chances to go other places. Of course, I'm glad, we're all glad you weren't here as we wrap this segment up. But um, your personal goals, your thoughts uh, for the rest of the season? Oh, pretty much the same. Just be, be a good teammate and uh, just help the team out whenever I can. Major? Uh, exercise, sports, science. Oh, good for you. All four years and stay healthy too. Well, uh, it's a pleasure meeting you and a pleasure having you on the show. So good luck and stay healthy the rest of the season. When we come back, we're going to talk more. We're going to talk about our opponent coming up, the home opener, right after this. The all-new Honda Fit gives you the flexibility of the magic seat with the fuel efficiency you celebrate at the pump. From Honda Motor Works. You'll love more miles per dollar. Honda Motor Works. The all-new Honda Fit gives you the flexibility of the magic seat with the fuel efficiency you celebrate at the pump. From Honda Motor Works. You'll love more miles per dollar. Honda Motor Works. Since 1897, Schilling Supply Company has been your single source provider of business solutions and supplies. Their 65,000 square foot facility stocks over 3,000 items ranging from packaging, janitorial, industrial, food processing, safety, and specialty products. Schilling Supply provides the essentials you need to meet your customers' and employees' expectations. Businesses like Gunderson, Quick Trip, Dynamic Recycling, and Badger Corrugating rely on Schilling Supply to deliver the right products at the right time. Schilling Supply Company. Visit on the web or or call. Stunning from any angle, the HRV is a crossover of style and versatility. You love more miles per dollar. Honda Motor Works. Stunning from any angle, the HRV is a crossover of style and versatility. You love more miles per dollar. Honda Motor Works. Stunning from any angle, the HRV. Stunning from any angle, the HRV is a crossover of style and versatility. Well, welcome back to the Mike Schmidt Football Show here on KQEG. The fine, the finally, the home opener is right around the corner. Finally, all the Eagle fans, the students, so on, are so anxious 
for this home opener against Dickinson State and NAI school on Saturday at 1 p.m. What are we looking at? Yeah, well, it's, it's nice to be back in Wisconsin. It's interesting. Last year, we didn't play a game outside of the state of Wisconsin. We were, we were in our state. Uh, we played at Ripon, and then we had two other non-conference home games. And now we've gone two weeks, and we haven't played in the state of Wisconsin. So it'll be nice to get back, uh, back home, and, and it's going to be great, obviously, to be back in, in front of, of our stands and our people uh, that'll be here. So we're, we're looking. It's going to be a great day. And, and it's going to be a good team that's coming in here now. Uh, this is a really good football team in Dickinson State. I know they're NAIA, and a lot of people probably don't know much about them. But uh, going in last week, they were ranked 13th in the country in, in NAIA. So we have a monumental task ahead of us. And, and we, we've said it. We talked about it last week. We're here to schedule this thing aggressively. We're here to play good teams and get ourselves ready to compete for a conference championship. And this certainly will be another test for that. Yeah, I did a little research. But before we talk about that, um, how did that matchup develop? And next year, are you going to have to go out there? Yeah, we are going out there next year, 10 hours. It's in mountain time zone. So that'll be, uh, it's a long trip and, and we'll figure all that out. But uh, we actually, uh, we had a game. We had a week three game. I think it was a week four game, actually. I can't remember how it worked out, but the team dropped us. We had a contract and, and everything in place and the team wanted no part of, of playing us uh, out of Michigan. So we had to find one. So we literally, Coach A uh, did all the work for it, called, emailed, everything every team we possibly could find and we this was the first one that we could uh that we could pick up was was dickinson and so uh we looked at we're like geez this is gonna be a tough match up here against these guys but again it kind of ties into the philosophy that we had let's schedule aggressively and and get it but that'll be quite a road trip out there next year yeah, well, uh, well, we got to go all the way out there well for us too but we'll probably fly out there i would assume so. yeah i'm the big dime that you guys have that'll be fine us so too. Uh, anyway just just talking about for all of our uh fans here I, the research I did on uh, Dickinson State, they were 9-2 and two last year, went to the postseason. They're picked to win the conference championship this year. When I saw it, was like their, their first game, 51 to nothing, they beat uh, uh, Jamestown, University of Jamestown. Yeah. Second game, they got beat 21-10. But uh, the rich history of success with that program is – uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, they've had a lot of success there. Uh, they their their head coach was actually a good a really good player uh, on on some of their really great teams uh, back in the late '80s. And uh, yeah, this is a really strong program, a really good football team. They are picked to win their league. They, they have a really interesting deal with their league. They play each opponent in their league twice, which is part of why we can get these guys in a non conference game and the way it works out weeks wise uh, with it. But yeah, they they lost this past week to Rocky Mountain College, uh, Rocky Mountain University in Bill. Montana, who's a, a, also a ranked team in NAI football. Uh, they have a lot of talent on the offensive side. They, this is going to be a really physical, physical football team. They're, they're a huge football team physically. They're going to show up here and look the part uh, for sure. So we got another huge game coming up uh, uh, right, you know, it kind of in a row as you look at our schedules. It lays out Illinois Wesleyan to Dickinson to Whitewater Starkoff, uh, yeah. WIAC play in a couple weeks. So uh, big, big test coming up for us this weekend at home. Real quickly, when you drill down to their team, this impressed me. Five return four of the five offensive linemen. Yep. What does that tell you? Re, the fourteen returning stars, including the their two top wideouts, their quarterback, and four defensive uh, all conference performers. I mean, so personnel wise, they have a new offensive coordinator, which uh, yep. which you, you perhaps knew. Um, so the personnel is, uh, I mean, they're going to come here ready to play. you. Oh, without a doubt. They've got, they, they'll hit you now too. Uh, they got a lot of speed on the offensive side, especially they play really physical up front, but they got a ton of speed really all over the place. Uh, quarterback is a big physical kid that throws the heck out of the football now. Uh, so we got a big challenge for us. Uh, and, and you, you look at what, uh, what, what, uh, the last couple teams have done. I mean, Luther college even, uh, threw the ball, t uh, 25 times against us and, and or 30 times against us and and uh, and and obviously Illinois Wesleyan had a big day throwing the football against us. These guys are going to come and chuck it all over the place, but they're going to smack you now defensively. They play really physical football. They want to hit you. Uh, uh, really good coverage in the back end. So. Uh, I mean, this, this you watch this team play on, on film, and they are big, physical, and run really, really well. Well, one of my guys I used to watch all the time on TV was Lou Holtz. You sound just like him because every opponent is like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. But I, you're not exaggerating. You know you? what? I, I, I always <laughs> I did learn from, from guys that uh, – 
uh, my, my high school coach, he would convince you that you were going to lose to the Little Giants. You know, uh, he would, we'd show up and we, we won a game one time and I was convinced we were going to lose a game going in the game and, and we won 61 to nothing. And, and I, I'll never forget some of those lessons with that, but well, it's got, yeah, yeah, I know, but it's, it, it, we're not going to, we're not going to win this game 61 to nothing. We're no. not going to win this. This thing is going to be another game that comes right down to the bitter end of this, but uh, there's some great teaching moments that we had from this past game, and there's going to be some big moments that we're going to have to utilize a lot of those things that we learned from this game in this upcoming game, because if we don't, we'll get beat, and I, I think a lot of people from the outside can look and say, oh, you got a trap game coming up. You, you got coming off a big win against a ranked opponent. You got Whitewater after that, but in no way are we looking at it like that. Uh, this no. is a, a really big opponent they're really good when you watch the tape there's no way you could uh, underestimate how good this team is so uh, I think our players will know the kind of challenge that they have ahead of them and, and it's going to be a really yeah. good game to open up the, our home schedule S certainly don't play with, uh, by looking in the rear view mirror and admiring yourself so quickly before we close a couple of things Whitewater over Concordia Bethel over River Falls UW Eau Claire 2-0 and o yep, two over and o. Uh, St. Norbert's good for uh, them Wabash out of Indiana over Point, Davenport over Oshkosh. That kind of stunned me. Davenport's and a really good team out of Division Two in that GLIAC. That's a that's a tough matchup, and a, it was a good football game. And Stout over Gustavus. Yep, and a tight one in overtime. Yep. Yeah, Gustavus overtime. went for two and, and didn't convert, so Stout comes away uh, with their first one of the year, too. So another great weekend for the league. Yeah, and it's going to be – we hope that we fill the stadium. We'll be broadcasting. I know KTY on the radio will be broadcasting on TV. It'll be a – It'll be an, a, it's supposed to be a beautiful day, so we hope all, all our viewers uh, can attend. And, uh, it, and it's going to be some special thing. I'm sure Kim's got planned, too. Well, we hope you enjoyed the Mike Schmidt Show here on KQEG. Again, thanks to all of our sponsors. Uh, our next show will be on Monday, September 17th, as we recap the Dickinson State game and answer the question, what do the Eagles do? What do the coaches do during a bye week? We're sleep. Gonna, we're going to talk. Sleep. <laughs> we're going to talk about that be before getting ready for Whitewater on September 29th at 4 p.m. after the Oktoberfest parade. You got it. You got so, it. So this show again uh, is live and replayed every Tuesday at uh, 2:30. So until next week, uh, for Mike Schmidt, I'm your host Terry Erickson, thanking you for joining us here on the Mike Schmidt Football Show. You've been watching the Mike Schmidt Football Show on KQEG-TV. The Mike Schmidt Football Show is brought to you by Honda Motor Works, your electric and hybrid headquarters at 4th and Cass. By Schilling Supply, serving businesses with critical supplies since 1897. By Schumacher Kish Cremation and Funeral Services in La Crosse, La Crescent, and Onalaska. By 360 Real Estate Solutions, they've got the keys to your new home. And by Market & Johnson, Western Wisconsin's construction leader, adding value to everything they do. Join us next week at this same time for the Mike Schmidt Football Show.